So this is video number three in the, uh, on the Lancet studies. Do uh, carbs really kill you? Uh, there were two studies uh, in, published in Lancet. One last year, which said carbs kill you. Um, and then another one published August 18th, which said no, uh, low carb kills you. So which is it? Do we have to pick our poison here or what? I, <clears throat> I'm going to jump into some of the topic of this video and say, I think actually both studies are correct. And how can I think that? Um, this first study is association of fat and carbohydrates um, in cardiovascular disease. It's the PURE study. It was done in uh, several countries, I believe eight different countries. Um, the one that was published just this um, past week or two, uh, was dietary carbohydrate intake and mortality, a prospective cohort study, and meta-analysis. Now that one showed that having a higher amount of carbs um, shortened your lifespan. As you might imagine, there are a lot of people that are ticked off. I actually went through, as I was going through the airport, I listened to this guy. I usually uh, agree with a lot of what he says. His name is Ken Berry. He's a physician. He's um, somewhere near Nashville. And uh, he's gotten way deep into the uh, low-carb, ketogenic lifestyle. Now, <clears throat> uh, he admitted he self-admitted and labeled he was going into a rant on this article. Um, and he's done it a couple of times. Um, he said it was bad science. He said that uh, the uh, Lancet was becoming a bad... Um, we, we need to boycott Lancet. He also said we need to boycott or that uh, Harvard was going down the tubes. Um, and here's what, here was his uh, reason for that. This is uh, Dr. Willett who's a co-author of that last study. Um, and here he is chumming around with Ansel Keys. Ansel Keys was the, the bad guy that uh, hit a lot of data on the seven countries study. So it's uh, guilt by association. And again, I agree with a lot of stuff that uh, Dr. Barry has to say, but there's a lot of things I don't agree with. Actually, as I look at that study, Dr. Willett was a... Uh, was the author of the um, the survey instrument used by ERIC, A-R-I-C, which was the mother study for this. Um, <clears throat> it's called the frequency... Hold on just a second, and I will... Um, FFQ. Dr. Willett was the author of the FFQ, the food frequency... Um, questionnaire. It's a 61 item uh, food frequency questionnaire. It was designed by Willett and Associates. Because of that, th that may have been his only association with this study. I don't really know. He may, may have been very deep into it. But my, my point, it, it, this study doesn't declare his level of, of input. So again, I think we're reaching in terms of criticizing. And there's some interesting reasons. Why are we doing that? Before I talk about why we react the way we do, I'm going to cover, cover a couple of other beliefs I've heard um, from Dr. Barry and others. One is that we know what our ancestors ate. Well, I don't think, I don't know. I mean, maybe our ancestor, maybe this, maybe this, I'm not even sure this guy's my ancestor. I don't know. Uh, I don't know that. And if that is my ancestor, I don't know that's what he ate. In fact, take a minute and read this. Teacher, you should know this. You learned this three years ago. Me. I don't even remember what I ate last week. So the point is, uh, we don't know. We tend to not remember what we ate last week, let alone two days ago. How do we know with scientific accuracy what our ancestors ate? We don't know anything else. We know very little else about them. So 
<clears throat> as you can see, I, I don't mean to be the, the eternal skeptic, but there's just a lot of things that I'm skeptical about. I'm old enough to have witnessed a lot of debates. When I was in Japan, I was uh, staying in a hotel and I found that um, there's a thing called, I think it's called the Book of Buddha, but this book, um, I'm obviously not Buddhist, so I picked it up and started looking at it, and again, there was also a, a Bible there, I think uh, uh, the Gideons left the Bible, I'm not sure, there was a group that I, that I read that left the Book of Buddha, and anyway, side story. Here's the debate. These, these blind men, after examining this elephant, began to get into a debate regarding what the elephant was. One had felt the tusks, another the trunk, the ears, the legs, the um, sides, and the, the tail. Well, <clears throat> and then they got into a debate regarding exactly what the elephant was. If you were there trying to decipher what an elephant was, had never seen one, and the only information you had from these guys, this is what it looked like. It would be a snake with some sort of large head behind it, a spear sticking out, um, fans off, hanging off the side, a big wall behind it with a rope hanging off the wall, and all of it was being supported by tree trunks. That's not what an elephant is, by the way. And guess what? I think this whole debate about, and, and I've said this before, I eat, um, I went from plant-based with a little bit higher carbs to uh, lower carb. I'm remaining low carb, and we'll get into that some other point, not right now. Actually, I will make one point. If you look at this study, the most recent study, one of the things that they found is you, uh, there's a significant exception regarding low-carb lifestyle. If you replace those carbs with um, plant-based protein and oils, you get a decreased um, risk. So I couldn't help but make that statement. And again, it's going to take a couple of other videos to get into detail on this. And I will in the next video end up reading a lot of the methods because it gives us yet another perspective on we got six blind men and an elephant here. Um, yes, they're all right, but they're all wrong too once you start trying to describe the bigger picture. Uh, if you've been looking at this for a minute, maybe you see it now. Science blind. Um, again, it gets to all of the debate, more heat than light around this issue on carbs, low carb versus uh, low fat. This was written by Andrew Stuhlman, and his perspective is, look, there are competing uh, theories about life. As humans, we have to develop theories which put things together like maybe how, how many carbs should we eat. Um, but there are competing facts, and therefore many of us have competing theories within our head. Uh, we can get blinded uh, about realities that support one if we're too focused on the other. Uh, this is uh, Tally Shiro. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, there's a good Google talk uh, given by her, and she wrote a book called The Influential Mind. And another one called something like The Optimism Bias. That, that book makes the point. It's all about wiring. Um, in these theories in our head, if we're a total um, dyed-in-the-wool, low-carb guy, we're going to not see this. And why? The brain, the brain is wired that way. There is, uh, there's actually a nucleus, and she mentions where it is. You got to uh, get the book or see the YouTube if you want to see the exact names of these nuclei. But the nucleus that um, is associated with the reward area, in other words, um, I'm gonna gonna get a whole bunch of money because of what just happened, um, or something good's gonna happen because of what just happened. That nucleus. Remember, you remember those facts much, much better, and you incorporate them into your consistent worldview. On the other hand, if this is new information that doesn't fit all your facts, 
the, the nucleus that's responsible for doing that is challenged. So let me go back to these articles. First to the theories and just give a couple of, uh, give an example of how I think both articles are probably correct in what they say. The problem is how we interpret them and the realities, the populations that we're looking at. The first article, the Pure Study, published a year ago in Lancet, basically ended up saying too many carbs in your diet is bad for you. A higher percentage of calories from carbs is bad for you. Well, that was an international study. Uh, and guess what? There were like, I think, eight, eight uh, countries involved with that study. And I think this gives you the picture very quickly. Look, if you're in an African village, um, basically on a subsistence diet, the vast majority of these diets are usually corn and maize. The most important thing you can do for these kids for their diet is to get more protein and fat into it. So yes, I'm not surprised if you're looking at these kids to see to see and hear, cutting, decreasing that uh, ratio of carbs to fats. Uh, decreasing that ratio would be good. Getting more fats into their diet would be good. Now let's say one of these kids ends up coming to America. And of course this is, uh, I, I hope this is uh, a sarcastic joke, but obviously it's a picture, it's a real image. <clears throat> but again, just just go with me here in terms of logic and Let's go back to the next study. The study saying, look, adding carbs to your diet. That was the study that was just published um, in Lancet about a week ago. Adding carbs to your diet uh, kills you early. Well, <clears throat> let's talk about this picture for a minute. If you took out the buns and you took out the supersized uh, fructose, what, 80, 100 grams, 150 grams of fructose uh, from the Coke that, uh, is, that goes with this and the carbs in the fries, you'd probably do this gentleman a lot of good. I'm going to say one thing though. Even for you low carb folks, eating a this much meat is still going to kill you. To me, I think one of the things that happens with a low carb diet is that you don't get this fluctuation in terms of um, uh, insulin so you don't get this hunger uh, I'm hungry I gotta eat more okay now I'm satiated now I'm hungry again two hours later um, <clears throat> I don't usually if somebody goes low carb they're not gonna eat this size of meat and continue but if they do they're gonna continue to have problems too so um, Hopefully, I'm beginning to help you with a picture of how, again, both worlds could be correct. As I read these articles, I think they are. Um, <clears throat> there's one other thing that I'll cover. Uh, I'll give you a brief um, window into the next video. As you start looking at the, um, the actual uh, study population, this uh, recent study saying dietary carb uh, decreasing dietary carbs actually decreases your lifespan. Uh, this is for a specific group, a young group. So in your, when you're 15 to uh, 25 years old, if you decrease the portion of calories that's, com that's coming from carbs in your diet, you, not the total amount, but the portion, uh, you will live four years less. Well, <clears throat> I'm not sure that's untrue. Uh, here's the thing, though. If I'm a 55 or 60 or 65-year-old, pre-diabetic, I have insulin resistance, I'm, it, this study says nothing about that. And so guess what? I am still not uh, giving up my low-carb diet. Thanks for your interest.